Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I've got three sweet wines in front of me and I have no idea whether I've got them in the right order. Uh, but there's only one way to find out. Just let's start tasting. Uh, first one I've got is a Tokai. Uh, but it's um, it's not a regular Tokai measured in Petonias. A Petonia, what do you say, what is a Petonia? Uh, well, a Petonia, um, well, Botrytis. Look at a lot of Botrytis up on the internet. I can't, I haven't got enough time and, uh, I have got enough time, but uh, uh, I haven't got enough inclination to go into a, a precisely what a, uh, what Botrytis is. Uh, but um, they get these Botrytis affected grapes, shriveled up by this thing called Noble Rot or Botrytis. Um, and uh, they, they put them together in a bucket, uh, which is called a Petonia. And then they get a regular wine, um, and uh, which they have in a gonki and um, they measure the sweetness of the wine uh, according to how many putonias they put into a gonki. You got that? You may not have done, but um, it's, it's on the internet. Look it up. You can find out loads and loads of fascinating stuff about Tokai. But this isn't one of those styles of wines. This is what they call um, Samarodny which is, I think it just means as it comes. Um, and uh, the idea here is they just go out, pick a load of grapes, and some of them will have botrytis. They don't bother separating the botrytis ones, uh, and they just make a regular wine. And uh, sometimes it turns out dry, sometimes it turns out sweet. It depends on how much botrytis is in the grapes in the first place. Um, so, so I have no idea whether this is going to be uh, slightly sweet or very sweet. It does say on the back, uh, actually it says in French, um, it says do that make that's what made me think it should be in a sweet wine video rather than a non-sweet wine video also the color of the wine honeyed barley sugar uh, there's a raisiny character uh, barley sugar sweets are, uh, are some things that if you're not if you don't live in the UK then you'll never have heard of barley sugar but it's a type of candied um, orange it's about the same color as the wine in fact um, orange sweets that for some reason used to be sold in chemist shops in the UK, whether the idea was, uh, oh, like, oh, these, these are good for you, suck them, and they were some sort of placebo and uh, mysteriously made you better. But, uh, yeah, th th there's this smell of barley sugar here. A uh, bit of honey, a bit of nutty nugget-like character, uh, some raisins, uh, and uh, it, it feels like there's going to be this piercing backbone of citrus acidity as well. A bit of a come-to-mummy wine, that. Um, it's... Um, it's got lovely, juicy, round marmalade fatness. Uh, this um, the, uh, and the the, the, the pithy uh, orange peel acidity going through it. Yes, there's this sweetness there. The barley sugar is on the nose rather than when you come to taste it. And uh, uh, complete, confident, uh, and um, yes, it, it, it's not too sweet. I don't know. I don't know exactly how sweet it is. Uh, but it's probably more on that bring it out with your blue cheeses rather than um, a very sticky pudding. If you are going to have it with pudding, maybe a nice lemon tart would be would be nice with that. Marmalade, uh, marmalade sponge. I, I can imagine having that because it's got a little bit of that vanilla character, uh, and it's also got the uh, uh, the marmalade character. Paddington would approve. Supremely tasty that. Okay. Let's see how the next one suffers after that. Um, and um, we've got three different countries here, uh, all totally different styles of wine. So this one is the uh, Lyrarachis, or Lyrarachis, Malvasia of Crete. Uh, so naturally sweet wine from sun-dried grapes. Uh, has it got a vintage on? Um, no, I can't, I can't see a vintage at the moment. Uh, but um, yeah, so exceptional sweet wine. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, we have left the grapes, are the variety, you, you know all these, uh, Plito, Daphne, Vidiano and Villana. Uh, I know Villana because uh, it's one of the ones that they, uh, I, I think they use on Santorini for um, blending in with a, a Certico. But anyway, let's see. Oh, it's, colour-wise, it doesn't look all that dissimilar to the one before, so I think maybe we are in the right order. Well, it, feels, it smells like a younger wine. Um, as I say, I can't see a vintage on here. Is there one on the cork? Uh, can't see one. But um, it doesn't feel like it's going to have that, uh, uh, that piercing backbone. Uh, it feels like it's going to be rounder, plusher, uh, but um, uh, and, and just as sweet. It, it feels like the first one wasn't too sweet. Again, this one feels like it's not going to be too sweet. Uh, but um, uh, this is much more, yes, it, it is more pudding wine, I think, because it doesn't have that acidity. Bit of vanilla. Um, that, I don't know whether they've um, aged part of this in a barrel. Does it say anything like that? Um, ages for one year in New Oak, yeah, because there's a creamy vanilla character coming through. 
um, and uh, it feels like a, 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 a slightly different style. The, the first one um, yeah, had that classic Tokai bite. Here it's maybe more on that um, slightly old-fashioned Sauterne edge, so there's not um, as much um, citrus fragrance, uh, but there's more bread, there's more uh, more corpulence here uh, and some will prefer the the one that's reined in with acidity some will prefer the extra generosity here uh, a bit of cake mix in there if you you know if you uh, undercook a sponge cake and it's got that uh, that thoddy bit in the way where it dips in the middle and um, it's tasty and you think oh I, I should put should I put this in for a, another uh, 10 minutes or so and then you think oh no I've actually eaten it so I can't do that a um, bit of that character too I like both of those prefer the tokai but final one, um, it's um, All Saints Rutherglen Muscat and um, eight year old blend, give it a whirl. Oh and interesting for Australia, uh, this, uh, most of Australia has got uh, screw caps um, but this is one of those with the, the vino lock so if you've not seen a vino lock come off it you just give them a little push on the side and then they whiff off like that. Well, this has also got some of that barley sugar about it, um, and uh, well, it, fascinating because it's also got some of the marmalade character. Not quite as marmalade as the as the Tokai was, but um, it doesn't feel like it's got that going to have that pithy bite. But here, it feels like it's it's going to be a bit more rich, rounded, uh, and it's fortified, um, but not too fortified. I think it's like seventeen percent, um, and so it feels that this is this is the young edge of Muscat. This is the sort of thing that you sit there and um, uh, sip and, and uh, chill quite a bit and um, treat it almost as you would tawny port. Uh, so yes, good with cheeses. Um, but let's see whether how it tastes. Some people describe it as liquid Christmas pudding. Um, for me, it's the older styles that, that, that are more on that Christmas pudding. Here, we're more in the uh, liquid lemon sponge because it's got the lemon, um, it's got the, that bit of barley sugar, it's got the vanilla, it's got that, yeah, it's got that, yeah, that little, slightly, I was talking about uncooked cake mix on the one before, it's got some of that character too. Um, in terms of favourites, it's probably my least favourite actually. Um, and I, I, I think it's really good. Uh, I think the Malvasia is good, but the Tokai is, is, um, is excellent. Um, but uh, all of these would uh, very happily, um, I'd very happily sit down with a glass. And um, yeah, as I say, probably with a plate of blue cheese rather than a pudding. But um, if you force me into having a pudding after that, it may depend on how much I'd uh, had before, but I'd certainly give it a go. See you soon.